your way. This is not Burger King. But God says that he's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. God said that he is God and he changes not. And, and we need to understand that. The world wants the gospel to evolve, to change, to fit the world's way. But God said he don't evolve, you evolve. His word is sent here to change the hearts of man. Not the wicked hearts of man to change the word. So as we go through this and, and understand, we got to understand that we need to be ready when Jesus comes. It's not good enough, ladies and gentlemen, I'm telling you now. Contrary to popular beliefs, it's not good enough just to have come and join the church. Or to say you've come up and gave your heart to Jesus. Jesus said in his word in Matthew uh, chapter 5, chapter 7 as well. Those who do the will of my Father, they shall enter into the kingdom of God. Not, doesn't matter what religion tag we tag on us, what denominational tag we tag, but those who do the will shall enter into his kingdom. Not everyone, he said in Matthew chapter, chapter 7, verse 21, not everyone that say unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do his will. Well, here we're going to look at some things in Matthew chapter 24 and 25 about his will. But the main thing, he wants us to be prepared. If you have your Bibles, open up your Bibles to Matthew chapter 24. The book of Matthew chapter 24. Amen. Matthew chapter 24. Look with me at verse 30 and 31. He says here in verse 30, he says, And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. Well, let me read verse 29. Verse 29. Just for the sake of reading it to, to dispel some things. I'm going to cover verse 29 in detail next week on part 3. But, but verse 29, he says, Immediately after the tribulation. Does it say that in your Bible? Yes says immediately after the tribulation. See, because, I, you know, I'm not one of those guys that's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. I'm a Bible guy. You know, there's some people say, well, the saints of God are not going through the tribulations. Well, you know, as a, as a, as a soldier, a former soldier in the United States Army, we prepare for the worst. When we, when we prepare for desert storm, for desert shield, and then desert storm, we prepared for the worst. We were ready for the worst. Now, even though they gave up, we accepted the lease. But you have to be prepared as a former athlete. When you, when you face that opponent, you got to face that opponent prepared that they're going to give you their best game. If you're a boxer, prepare that that other boxer, that other opponent is going to give you his best match. And if you're not prepared to go the distance, you might fall short. Well, here it says, immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the power of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall the, the, the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the cloud of heaven with the power and great glory. And he shall send his angels. He shall do what? Send his angels with a great sound of, the, of a trumpet. And they shall gather together the elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. Then, so whether you pre-trib, post-trib, or, 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 or mid-trib, that's up to you. I'm telling you to be prepared when he comes. To be prepared. If he happens to come back before the tribulation, praise God, we, 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 we're, we're, we're blessed. But for those who do not prepare, they're not going to make it. For those who don't have their lamps trimmed, 
And I'm going to talk about that in a few minutes. Those who, who think, well, the Lord Terry is coming. And think that you may not have to go through something. It's best to be prepared to go through something and not go through it than for it to happen and you're not prepared. Yeah. It's that saying that we used to always say, it's best to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. And here we find uh, in the Bible, especially in chapter uh, 25, and we'll get there, those who was wise and those who were foolish. Those who prepared and those who didn't prepare, did not look for his coming. Look down with me at verse 36. It says, but of the day and the hour, no, no man. No, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Now, Jesus himself, the person of Jesus, don't even know when he's coming back. You know why God didn't tell Jesus? Because Jesus told us everything God told him. He said, what my father tell me, I tell you. So here, only God himself, God the Father, will tell us when the Son is coming back. But when he comes back, he's coming back for a church. He's coming back for his people. Not a denomination, not a religion. There are some people who are saying in this world, if you're not in their religion, you're not going to heaven, or in this, that, and the other. These people are confused and lost because nowhere it says that in this word. In the book of Revelation, the, uh, the, the, the revelator uh, wrote that I, I saw him coming from the four corners of the earth, from the north, the south, the east, and the west. People of all nations, of all generations, of all kindreds, of all kinds. It's not any particular denomination or any particular religion. It's the fact is, is, if you have Jesus Christ in your life as your Lord and your Savior, I don't care what banner you serve under, but do you have Jesus? Because he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no man come to the Father but by him. Jesus said, enter at the, at the gate. Enter at the gate. He said, if you come in any other way, then the door, enter at the door. He's the door. And if you come in any other way, you're a thief and a robber. says, don't nobody know when he's coming. He said, verse 37, but as the day of Noah of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the, in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them away, took them all away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. In other words, we don't know. And I said it last week, but it bears reiterating. We got to live every day. We got to put away the foolishness. Now that's not to mean we can't enjoy ourselves. The Bible tells us Jesus said himself, occupy until he comes. That means live. Live. Know what it means to live and not just be alive. Live your life. But don't live your life in sin. Don't live your life rejecting the truth. But live your life day by day but still looking, the Bible says, for his appearance. Looking for his coming. For those who look for his coming shall see it. But if you're not looking, if you're not waiting obediently, you might find yourself lost. And I know that's contrary to what's popular out there. But I'm not here to be popular. I'm here to prepare you. First, to, have, to make sure that you're saved, that you know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. And to give the gospel 
so that you will know but know but know. It's not about religion, it's not about denomination, it's not about this, that, or the other, or your family tree, or just doing good. There are a lot of good people going to hell. Yes, I said it, there are a lot of good people, they're morally good, but they have not accepted Jesus Christ. If you read in your Bible in Acts chapter 10 about a Roman soldier named Cornelius, he was a good man. The Bible says a devout man who gave to God always in the church. He did good for people. But he didn't know Jesus. And God sent Peter to him so that he could hear the gospel for the first time. Because he was a good man, God said every man, woman, boy, and girl shall have a chance. God is not sending anyone to hell, but he sent everyone the way out. But we got to be prepared. We can't live life like just eating, drinking, and being merry, doing our own thing. We can't live life like that. We got to expect him with anticipation. I said it before, but it bears reiterating, we ought to be like that little kid who's waiting on his daddy to come home from work because his daddy told him, when I come home from work, I'm going to take you to the park or take you somewhere. And that little kid is, is constantly at the window and at the door with expectations waiting for his father. Are you waiting? Are you prepared for his coming? Don't be like those people. Jesus is giving a warning. Don't be unprepared. Don't be unprepared. Look with me at verse 42. Verse 42, it says uh, just a simple thing. Watch, therefore, for you know not what hour your Lord come. Watch. Watch. And as he goes on, he tells some parables. He gives some examples. But he tells us to watch. Some of the examples he gives, you'll find, once again, in Matthew 25, he gives the example of the five wise, wise and the five foolish virgins who are waiting for their bridegroom to come. And because they, the five wise, they trimmed their lamps and they prepared themselves. It's about preparation. They did what they're, they're, they were supposed to do in getting prepared. And the five foolish they just say, you know, uh, you know, we'll be all right. We got enough. We've done enough. And they were unprepared. So when that Lord came and they sound the alarm that he has come and they, they got up and they trimmed their lamps and it says at midnight they got up to trim their lamps and those foolish ones now was asking the wise ones, hey, give me some of your oil. They said, no, because if I give you some of my oil, we may not all have enough. And then when they finally got there, the Lord says, I don't know you. I don't know you. Because they wasn't prepared. Before that, in, in, in the latter part of chapter 24, it tells about a servant. The Lord left him in charge, and, and, and instead of that servant doing what he should do, in other words, God gave us some missions. We ought to be reaching others. And yes, you teenagers too. You ought to be reaching others. It's not just about me, 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 my four no more. It's not about get all I can, can all I got, sit on the top and let the west watch. But we ought to be bringing somebody else in. We ought to, if each one reach one, everyone will be reached. No, you may not can preach the gospel like me, but you can at least tell them, you know, that, that hey, Jesus Christ came to save you. Not only from your sins, but to save you from eternal damnation. Keep it simple. Keep it simple. You may not know all the scriptures and where to show them this and show them that, but give them what you got. Say, I know Jesus lived and he is coming back. And he is coming back. Well, that servant didn't, didn't do what he was supposed to do. So when the Lord came back, he was unprepared. He was unprepared. Go with me to the book of 2 Peter, and I'm not going to be long today. 
We got another activity going on today, uh, this afternoon, and, and I'm not going to be long. But go to Second Second Peter, I mean. Go to Second Peter chapter three. Say Amen when you get there. Second Peter chapter three. And we covered a lot of Second Peter chapter three last week, but there's some certain points I'm going to hit on hit on today. Look with me at verse 9. Once again, the Lord is not slack concerning his promises, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to usward, not willing that any should perish. In other words, God does not want anyone to perish. He doesn't. But we found out last week there are many who are perishing. Hell has enlarged her mouth without measure. And there are many people fighting themselves. And even, and, and, and unfortunately, even some of our loved ones. I'm, I'm of, the, I'm of the, the school of, of thought is, how can I tell somebody I love them and I'm going to let them die and go to hell? How can I tell you that? I can't tell you I love you if I won't at least try. At least once. Yeah. At least once to rescue you from the pits of hell. If I don't now, if you reject it, that's up to you. But if I don't try, we got family and friends that we say we love them, but yet we won't share the gospel. We need to tell somebody. We need to tell them, especially if we say we love them. Now, if they reject it, amen. You can't do nothing about that. Go on, continue to live your life and share the gospel with somebody else. In other words, like Jesus told his disciples, when you go into a city or, or a house and, and, and that house don't be worthy, in other words, they reject the message, shake off the dust of your feet. That's not saying forget about them. Maybe you will get another opportunity. As long as they're still breathing, they got opportunity. But you ought to be a part of their deliverance. Or at least try to be. Or at least try to be. God's not slack concerning his promises. Because he doesn't want anyone to perish. But that all should come to repentance. Tell people they need to turn away from their sin and turn to God. And that through his son, Jesus Christ. We found out in Bible study of last week, Brother Scott brought up a beautiful scripture uh, at him and Sister Harrison out of first job. Say, if you don't have the son, you don't have the father. Without the, without the son, you cannot have the father. Jesus said to his disciples, he said, look, if they reject you, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. And if they're rejecting me, they're rejecting the one that sent me. So don't worry about the rejection. Don't worry about, I told you as uh, in times past, Sister Harrison and I, uh, uh, when we were members of another church, uh, uh, Christian House of Prayer in, in, in Congress Cove, they're in Colleen now, the main church, but but uh, uh, we were a part of the witnessing team. We called it the SWAT team. Now SWAT, I know, in police work stands for special weapons and tactics. But in church, in church, in our SWAT, it, it, it was defined as soul winning action team. Soul winning that we went out on Saturday mornings, going door to door, knocking. We went out to the parks. We went to the apartment buildings. We went sometimes even into to, uh, uh, different establishments. And we were sharing the love of Jesus Christ. Letting people know that the thief comes but to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus came that we might have life and have it more abundantly. That God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever would believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. That God commended his love toward us. That while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We were sharing that. And we shared with them 
What saith that the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. That if thou wilt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus. And believe in thy heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. We were sharing the gospel. The good news that Jesus came. He lived. He suffered. And he died. And shed his blood to pay the price for our sin. And all we got to do is to receive him. Because as many as would receive him, it says in St. John chapter 1, verse 12, to them he gave power to become sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. We share the truth. And that is not about religion. You can be as religious as you want and go to hell being religious. You can be as good as you want and go to hell being good. But it's about being God. It's about being, it's not who you are, but whom you are. By belonging to the family of God through his son, Jesus Christ, who came and paid the price so that you didn't have to pay it. Because the word says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things have become new, and all things are of God who have reconciled you to himself. How? Through his son. He brought you back from sin because this whole world is damned to sin. And he gave everyone the way out. So don't be deceived, the Bible says. Let no man deceive you. Don't be tricked and fooled about the broad way, the easy way, the anything go way. They're deceiving and being deceived, we found out last week. We're in verse 10. We're still in, in 2 Peter chapter 3. Look with me at verse 10. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night, in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. The earth also and the works that are therein shall be burnt up. Seeing then, now watch this, seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved. Now watch this, look up here, look up here, look up here. What manner of person ought you to be in all holy conversation and godliness. Now you see in all this is happening and you see what's going to happen in this world. Then how should you be? The Lord is trying to say, how should you be? How should you conduct life? He wants you to live life. He wants you to enjoy life. But he wants you to enjoy life in him. Prepared and waiting and looking for his appearance. Verse 12. Watch this. Looking Doing what? Looking. Come on, talk back to me. Doing what? Looking. It says, looking for the hastening unto the coming of the day of God, wherein the heavens being on fire shall be dissolved, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat. He says, looking. We ought to be looking. Every morning when we wake up, we ought to be looking for his appearance. Giving him thanks giving us glory and honor for watching over us the night before, for keeping us safe from our hurt, harm and danger, for waking us up, giving us another day that he had not given before. But throughout that day, we ought to be living our lives prepared for his coming. Living our lives, looking for him to come. Go to 1 John chapter 2. 1 John chapter 2. Say amen when you get there. It's not far from where you are. Just go to the right and you're there. 1 John chapter 2. Look with me at verse 28. Just one verse. Well, verse 28, 29. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear. Do what? Abide in him. Abide means to dwell, live, take up residence. Where? In him. 
not just in this world. In this world, the Bible says in Second in, 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 in Second Corinthians, no, First Corinthians chapter 15, it said, if this world is all the hope we have, then we are all men are most miserable. If this is all we got, we just well eat, drink, and be merry, because tomorrow we die. And death is coming to everybody. So don't fear death, the Bible says. You have no reason to fear death if you are in Christ Jesus. But if you're outside of Christ Jesus, you have fear death. Fear death. Because all waiting for you is torment. But the, the, but the plus side, the good side, the blessing side, if you are in Christ Jesus, heaven is your home. God is bringing you back to himself. Jesus said in, in, in John chapter 14, he says, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I'm coming back to get you. But will you be ready when he comes? You know, I, I, I was once stationed in Germany when I was in the military. And if you, and I know Sister Michelle, uh, uh, I know about this, and, and amen, and maybe a few of you others if you've ever been to Europe. That train system in Europe is on top. Yes. Yeah. It don't play. It's not like our train system or our bus system. You know, you can set your watch by the, by the, by the train. And when you go down to the Bahnhof, that's the train station, and you go to catch a train, you better not be late if you have to be on a certain train to get somewhere at a certain time. You better be there prepared to get on that train. And if you hesitate when it stops, because when that conductor says it's time to go, if you hesitate, you just missed it. You can be standing right there at the door, and when he shuts that door, he's moving on. Well, the Lord's gonna move on, with you or without you, but he wants to move on. With, he's coming back for you. Will you be ready? Will you be ready? I said I was in, 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 in verse 28. He says, my little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. We can have confidence if you're prepared when he appears. You can have full assurance and confidence that you know but know but know you belong to the Lord and you're going to be with And he went on to say, if ye know that, he is righteous. Ye know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. But pastor, what did that have to do with his coming? You know that he's righteous. In other words, he stands by his word. Then you yourself ought to be doing right. I told you that righteousness before, I told you this before, and it very reiterated. I told you there's certain things I'm going to repeat quite a bit. But righteousness means to be in right standing with God. You're righteous, not because of you, but in spite of you, but because of what Jesus did. To be in right standing with God. Amen. He who knew no sin became sin for us, that we may become the righteousness of God in him. But righteousness also means to do right. See, there are people preaching that righteousness doesn't mean to do right. You can do what you want and you still say but righteousness means to do right. Because if he is righteous, then we also must be righteous. Now, he makes us righteous through his shed blood. But after he makes us righteous, he tells us, now do right. Do the will of my Father. Be prepared when I come. So you won't be ashamed. You can have confidence. You can have confidence. You can be fully persuaded. Last scripture and we close. Go back to Matthew chapter 25. Matthew chapter 25. And we're going to close there. Hallelujah. But be prepared. I, I, I would implore you all to read all of Matthew chapter 24 and all of Matthew 25 and then the related scriptures. If your Bible is a reference Bible, read the related scriptures with that. It will break down a lot of stuff for you. It will help you to understand a lot of things that you may not understand. But I'm here today to help you to have your mind frame set that you're going to be prepared when he comes. That you're going to be looking for his coming. 
That's not to say don't plan for a vacation or don't plan to spend time with your family or don't uh, 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 go to work and just sit at home waiting with your Bible in your hand. No, that's not. He says occupy, live until I come, but live righteously. Live upright before God, doing his will. Doing his will. 